what is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another video by yours truly we got my boy sampo in the spotlight as promised we were going to drop a build guide showing y'all the 5000 iq play we're doing to build our sampo honestly he uh he can be a bit confusing if you don't know or understand how break effect works how dot damage works so i strongly recommend you guys check out my video explaining how his dots work but we're going to go into the details here and explain exactly why you need to put specific stats and substats on him and hopefully you'll have a vivid clarity as to how to go about playing that boy sampo before we get started i know some of y'all were asking did my ac get fixed it got fixed today it spent the entire half day uh, fixing the AC. The boy is officially no longer up in here sweating like hippopotamus booty cheeks. But on the other end, the people who were complimenting me about my shirt being off, you can't see me with my shirt off no more. Sorry, peeps. I don't need my girl mean mugging me every time I walk out the room. It's just not where it's at. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I tell you what, man, having AC again is definitely uh, a, a bit of a uh, humbling experience. It's like it, make, it reminds I, when things like that happen, it always reminds you, damn, okay. I'm privileged. I need to be thankful for these things. These things, not everybody has these things available to them. So anyways, not to talk your ear off. We're back and uh, rolling. Lights are back on. We're looking good again. Let's get into the video. Okay, so starting off with the boy Sampo. Let's go ahead and knock out the relics. What's the uh, the best two-piece relic set and the best main relic set? So there's two options you can go for. Uh, actually, you know what? Give me a second. Okay, sorry, I wanted to move my camera. There's two options you could go for. You can go for the break effect set or you can go for the win set. Now, here's the thing that I wanna be vividly clear about with break effect. If you are not deciding that your Sampo is the person that's going to be breaking shields, then obviously running break effect is absolutely useless. There's no point in running break effect if Sampo's not breaking shields, okay? So first you need to decide, is Sampo breaking shields? If he's not, this set is completely useless. With that being said, if you're not gonna run him as a break effect dedicated person to be getting shields down, then you need to be running the win set. And the reason being is because the win set is going to give him a 10% damage bonus, which may not seem like much, but dot compositions, especially Sampo in particular, they do not crit. So the only other damage source to amplify dot damage is gonna be their attack and their damage percent bonus. Again, I strongly recommend you, you check out my Sampo video about how dot works on him. So he needs any damage bonuses that he can get, which that's why this set is really good. The other reason, of course, advance forward is always good. Getting your action value lower is always a great thing. So you can go more often so you can have much better skill point efficiency and obviously pop off. Uh, so, yeah, you definitely want to run this set. Now, here's the thing. If you don't have a good win set, then you can also do some budget building. You can do like attack increase by 12 percent with the Musketeer of the Wild Wheat paired with two piece win set for 10% damage bonus. You can also do attack percent by 12% paired with this for 16% break effect. Those are the budget options I recommend. But uh, yeah, the, the, the reason why you wanna build them with attack percent is that's the other damage source to amplify his dot damage. Now, with regards to the body, the shoes, and the two piece set over here, what are the best options? What are the best main stats you should be going for? Let me go ahead and get this out of the way. Do not build Sampo for crit. His multipliers are absolutely booty cheek chronicles, okay? We come over here to his ult, that bad boy does 100% talent, and it scales by 6%. He's not made to deal a ridiculous amount of damage with his ult. He's not made to deal a ridiculous amount of damage with his shield, I mean, with his skill, nor is it for his basic attack. If you even go in through the traces, you'll see nowhere in here are they trying to amplify the damage of his ult. It's all about getting his wind shear stacks up. So with that being said, do not build sampo for crit it is a waste of time and you're getting a net negative if you do that the best way to go about it is to build them for effect hit rate as the main stat okay i'm going to explain why uh if you guys have seen my previous theory crafting or not even theory crafting just my content with regards to how effect hit rate works with silver wolf and how effect hit rate works period there in the end game i always theory craft based off of end game content because that's the hardest content in the game in the end game, people have, uh, I'm sorry, not people, elites and bosses have very high effect resistance. Kakolia and Virag are the elite, elite bosses, and they have 10% higher effect resistance than everybody else. They have a 40% effect resistance, whereas everyone else has a 30% effect resistance. If you've been keeping up with my channel, you've already heard me go over this. He has a 65% base chance to inflict wind shear for three turns, and then you can unlock a trace right over here that ex extends that into four freaking turns. This is a perma uptime essentially for anything that lasts four turns and then he can apply it 
through any attack means, which we're going to go over that as well, that's perma uptime. The only remaining factor is, can we guarantee him to apply that wind shear or get him as close to possible to a guaranteed wind shear uh, application? So 65%, how much effect hit rate do you need for this to be pretty much money? You need at least, and I do mean at the least, 100% effect hit rate. Ideally, you want to have about 120. And if you get higher than that, then great. I think anything past 130 is going to be overkill. But 120 will be the sweet spot and you'll be good against any content in the game. 100% will be good against uh, elite bosses that aren't Kokolia or Varrock. If you go against Branya, Japard, or any elite bosses, you're good to go with 100% effect hit rate. But Kokoli and Varag, 120. Anyways, let's do the math real quick so that you guys understand where I'm coming from here. We always pull up our trusty calculator. So he has a 65% base chance, all right? Let's say you have a 100% effect hit rate. That's going to be times two, right? That's going to give us 130. Now, if you're going against the elite bosses, Japard, Branya, and all the other guys, it's going to be minus or times 0.3. And we're going to subtract that 130 away again. And we have a 91% chance of applying his wind shear, okay? And the beautiful thing about him is his wind shear can be applied per tick on your attacks. His basic attack does a three-piece chicken nugget combo. So you can literally apply a wind shear on all three-piece chicken nuggets of the combo. One, two, three. He does a basic attack of three-piece combo. That's what I'm trying to say. You can apply a wind shear per freaking tick of that basic attack. Same thing goes with his skill. His skill does four ticks, and then when you get his E1, it does five ticks. So if you have 91% chance, each one of those has a 91% chance of applying wind shear. This is why you need very high effect, uh, effect hit rate. And this is just against the elite bosses, and he's still not guaranteed with even 100% effect hit rate. You see what I'm saying? So ideally, 120 times that same 65, uh, oh, what the hell? Hold on, my bad, my bad. 120, 65 times 2.2 is 120% effect hit rate, uh, times 0.3, and then minus that same 143, now we have literally a 100% effect hit rate chance. That's why you want 120. And, and against Kakolia, it's going to be, let's see, we'll do it real quick, 65 times 2.2 times 0.4 minus the same 143. 85 86 percent chance even with 120 so you see what i'm saying he needs a ridiculous amount of effect hit rate that's why uh now i will say that's literally the one percent scenario you're not really going up against kakolia until you get to floor 10 and even then they're going to be changing the memory of chaos up periodically they're going to add more bosses in though so this will become more and more prevalent but basically guys 120 100 is what you want to shoot for okay we're not gonna spend too much more time on that now what should you do for his sub stats well Obviously, his dot scales off attack percent, so you want to go attack percent as number one priority. Number two priority, we just discussed it, effect hit rate. And then number three and number four, if he's not doing, you still want to go for break effect. Even if he's not being the, the dedicated break effect person, there's going to be times where you are going to use him as break effect. So break effect something you want to go for as a main stat, absolutely. fucking -lutely. And for that final stat, you're either going to go for speed or flat attack. Those are the two you want to go for. Flat attack is going to contribute to his dot damage. Speed is going to increase his chances of going more often. So attack percent and effect hit rate are the most valuable sub stats. Then follow it up by break effect, speed, or flat attack. Those, those are the ones I'm going to strongly recommend. Now for his two-piece rope, no question this is the best one in the game for him it gives him increased effect hit rate and it gives him 25 percent attack when you get to 100 percent effect hit rate which you will you're going to build that on him so you cannot go wrong with this this is money shot it pretty much will absolutely guarantee uh your sampo to uh to add his wind shear stacks now let's go ahead and do a little bit of math how much effect hit rate can you get well you get 43 percent if you have a main body stat if you have this bad boy right here Take it up to level 15, you get 43%, right? So let's go ahead and do a little math here. So we got 43%. We're rocking the two piece. You get another 10% there. What the hell is this? What is what's going on over here, bro? Jesus. Calculator doing me wrong today. 43% from the main stack. 10% from the rope and the uh, you know, the two piece. And then he gets another 18% just from his traces. Like just by building him up to level 80 and unlocking those traces, he gets another 18 from that. We're at 71. And we haven't even factored in light cone or nor have we factored in substat. 
Okay, so if we get substat and light cone, all we need to do is make up for about 49. So if we throw, throw 49 in there, yeah, 120 right on the money, bro. So the crazy thing is I have his light cone, right? His light cone gives me an extra 20. So I'm already at 91, which means I only have to make up for 29 more effect hit rate, which honestly, since I don't care about crit rate, that's not hard to do. I just go look for all the uh, the pieces that have effect hit rate on them. Look, this has effect hit rate on it. This doesn't count because I'm using that. Uh, my speed boot, look at that. Or that's not a speed boot, that's attack percent. But effect hit rate on it. Ooh, this is actually not a bad option. Attack percent with speed and effect hit rate? Ugh, yuck. That's not bad. But yeah, speaking of which, the boot. You want speed boot? If you don't have a speed boot, throw attack percent on them. It's okay. What, what can you do about it, bro? What are you going to do? You gonna summon a speed boot on command? It's okay to run attack percent here. Now, with regards to the main stats of the rope, what I recommend is break effect right here. If he's your dedicated breaker, if he's not, attack percent. And if, uh, actually, yeah, you're just going to go for wind damage here. You need the wind damage bonus significantly for his dot, his wind shear dot. So wind damage bonus right here, and then attack percent unless he's your dedicated breaker then you're going to go for break effect right here okay now moving on to traces uh you obviously want to put this up as high as possible this is the trace that is literally going to increase his dot damage from his wind shear you 100 want to focus on this uh and then you want to go over to this the scaling on this is actually quite awful it only goes up one percent but it is significant because this is multiplicative to dots that affect that, that affect break effect dot damage and regular dot damage so this is massive as well uh, and this one, yeah, you can do that one next, I guess. But obviously you want to go for all the effect hit rate traces. That's effect hit rate. That's effect hit rate. You want to go for attack percent. That's going to increase his dot damage, obviously. Uh, effect resistance is, you don't have to prioritize that. I wouldn't prioritize it, honestly. Yeah, of course you want to unlock that. But effect hit rates, what you want to go for in attack percent. Uh, now, going over to light cones. I'm not going to do a go over every single light cone. I'm just going to, I'm just going to tell it to you like a doctor, bro. I'm um, gonna prescribe to you what you should run on him and, and that'll be the end of it. Uh, Eyes of the Prey is his best in slot light cone. Why? Because it has effect hit rate and damage percent bonus, which is going to increase his dot damage. You need, I already told you, you need effect hit rate on this guy. I just did the math for you. So this is his best in slot. If you don't have this, Good Night and Sleep Well is a fantastic option for damage. The problem is it has no effect hit rate, but this shit is actually nuts. If you ever should be so lucky enough to get it to R5, we're talking about 24% damage bonus that stacks up to three times for every debuff the enemy has. That's absolutely ridiculous. That's 72% damage bonus to die. So this is incredible. It just doesn't have any effect hit rate, but that effect hit rate is going to put this in front of it. Plus, if you ever get this to max refinement, oh my God, dude, that's beautiful, man. That's absolutely beautiful. Uh, finally, this one right here. These, those are my top three options. You're either going to go Eye of the Prey, Good Night and Sleep Well, or In the Name of the World. Everything else is mid as hell. Now, with regards to his Eidolons, his E1 is very valuable. Just like Asta, it adds an extra tick to his skill, which increases your chance of adding more wind shear. In fact, it gives you five ticks, which means if you have very high effect hit rate, you can get all five ticks in one go. Uh, his E2 is okay because you have to defeat enemies with his wind shear. He's not really the one that's going to be defeating enemies, if I'm being honest with you, until Kafka releases, that is, and she can triple proc his fucking dots. But he's not really the one defeating enemies, so this is okay. But his real value is his E5 and his E6. His E5 increases his talent, which is the, the shit that scales off of your dot damage attack percent. And his E6 takes that and multiplies it by 15, or adds another 15% multiplier on it. So I'll go ahead and explain this to you. His E6 gives 15% to this right here, no questions asked. So right now, mine's at 22%. If I had his E6, it'd shoot it to 37, which is freaking nuts because when you take him to level 12, he's gonna be at 72% of his attack percent. That'll be the scaling of this, which is actually crazy. So his E5 and E6 are incredibly valuable. And his E1 is for budget players is all you really need. Everything else is okay. When skill hits an enemy with five or more stacks of wind shear, the enemy immediately takes 8% of current wind shear damage. Now, I don't know what they mean by this because I don't have it. There's no way for me to test this out. I don't have an E4 uh, Sampo. So this could be more valuable than I'm giving it credit for. The problem is they have to have five stacks of wind shear and then it's only going to deal 8%. If it's only dealing 8% of, of his regular dot damage, Bro, that's literally like it's nothing honestly but if he's doing eight percent of his break effect win dot damage that's some solid damage i ain't gonna lie to you so it depends but i don't know because i don't have his e4 but other than that boys and girls that's gonna wrap it up for my sampo build guide i hope i brought you guys some value y'all take care and i'll catch you on the flip side